OEE and Industry 4.0, take zero. All right, so I just got back from a trip to Sylvania doing a post-DTMA pre-proof of concept site walkthrough for a client in heavy industry. And I had a two hour meeting with their board of directors. Large, this is a huge company, 1,500 employees. They got an enormous uh, board of directors. And true to form, in most organizations who are looking to digitally transform, their existing executive leadership doesn't really understand how digital transformation works. And one of the things that they really struggle with is the function of OEE in a digitally mature organization. There were a lot of really common questions that came up as it related to OEE in this organization that I want to answer today. And the reason why is because we see a very common misconception about overall equipment effectiveness in organizations who are looking to digitally transform. When you're an industry 3.0 company, that is a company who has been focused on automating industrial processes, but you still have, and you have digital IT infrastructure, but you have lots of paper-based business processes, you use OEE one way. When you're a digitally mature organization, you use OEE a completely different way um, as part of a much larger digital strategy. One of the things that really stood out when we were looking at this specific client was they were using OEE in a brand new facility that had been you know, only a production, uh, production process that's only been about a year old. They were, they're using OEE from an industry 3.0 perspective. I'm gonna kind of explain what that means today. I'm gonna to talk about how does an, uh, a digitally mature organization use OEE and some pointers on how to get the most out of OEE in your digital transformation initiative. All right, first thing to understand in a digitally mature organization, is the function of overall equipment effectiveness, okay? So the function of OEE and manufacturing execution in a digitally mature organization is it is the place where the planning of manufacturing is actually executed, okay? Um, and it is, a, it is a subset, a function within the business designed to convert data into information to make business decisions, okay? In a industry 3.0 company, which is what we mostly see when we're going on site and we're visiting clients for the very first time, the way that they're using OEE, if they're using OEE at all, is they're using it to meet some minimum requirement that one of their customers has, okay? A really good example is say you are a tier two or tier one automotive supplier and you are selling your goods either to the tier one supplier who's going to sell the goods to an automotive manufacturer or you're selling to the automotive manufacturer directly. One of the things that the automotive manufacturer requires, the product engineers at the automotive manufacturer is they generally require that you calculate OEE on your production lines. And they generally want your OEE calculation to be right around 85%. That's optimal, okay? Uh, they don't want it to be lower than that, and they don't want it to be higher than that. They generally want to see somewhere between 80 and 85%. Most industry 3.0 manufacturers who are calculating OEE, and they're doing it because their customer requires that they calculate OEE, they're basically calculating OEE to make that number a reality. And if you look at the, the, the employees on the plant floor, they view their role and the way that they interact with OEE in as it's my job to make sure that that's what the number is. If the number is supposed to be 85, it's my job to make the number 85. If the number is supposed to be 82, it's my job to make the number 82. And what they'll do is they'll manipulate the inputs that go into the OEE calculation to get the number they're looking for. There are many different ways to do this, but the most common way they do it is by manipulating the rate the standard rate that's being used for the calculation and manipulating downtime, turning unplanned downtime into planned downtime to get their availability number higher, and then moving the standard, the rate down so they can get their performance number higher. And now the only thing they have to do is focus on producing as many good parts as they possibly can to get that high OEE number. So what they're, they, in an industry 3.0 company where the customer is requiring that they calculate OEE, they are using OEE as simply a metric to make their customer happy, and they see their role as manipulating the number to get the output. 
What I want to do is talk about how industry 4.0 companies use OEE. As an executive leader, how do you need to be viewing OEE in your organization as a digitally mature organization, okay? All right, so a couple of examples, right? Um, you know, OEE comes in lots of forms, but it's always calculated the same way. We have an availability number, we have a performance number, and we have a quality number. All of those are calculated on a scale of zero to 100. The three are multiplied together, and they give us our OEE number. So there was this common question that comes up, like when you have a OEE number of say 90, uh, when someone says you have 90% OEE, that is an astronomically high OEE number. Basically, in order to achieve an OEE number of 90%, you need 100% in two of the pillars and 90% in one of the other ones. And all of those numbers would be beyond world class. For example, if you have 95% OEE, 95, or you have 95% availability, 95% performance, and 95% quality, that's like an 87% OEE number, 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around 87. Um, to achieve like a 90% OEE number is just astronomically difficult to achieve. So when you're, if you're an industry 3.0 company and you're trying to achieve this 80 to 85% number to make your customer happy, it is really, really, really hard to hit that number. That's why it's very common for us to go into these manufacturers, see that they're already calculating OEE, but they're doing it the industry 3.0 way, where it's our job to manipulate the inputs to get the output we're looking for, as opposed to using OEE as a, as a KPI to drive our focus on capital expenditure on how do we improve our processes, okay? But OEE basically is calculated this way, availability, performance, and quality to get us our OEE number. Comes in lots of different forms. This is an example of a dashboard that's got OEE on it. Here's an example of a TATSOF-based dashboard that's got OEE on it. It's the same thing, quality, performance, availability to get us our OEE number. But let's talk about, you're a company that wants to digitally transform, okay? You may be already calculating OEE, maybe you're not calculating OEE. But I'm gonna show you how you should be calculating OEE, how you should actually be using it, okay? So number one, let's talk about the OEE number, the overall equipment, equipment effectiveness, okay? The OEE number is calculated on a scale of zero to 100%, and it is meant for the executive. It's meant for the boardroom, okay? So it's, it's meant to see how much potential capacity we could increase by investing our capital into improving our efficiency. Okay, let's say I've got a, an OEE number of 50%. If I'm a board of directors, last year we did 1 million widgets. This year we're gonna try and do 1.5 million widgets because we've got orders for 1.5 million widgets. Do we have the capacity to produce 50% more widgets? Well, if our OEE number is 50%, the answer is yes. If our OEE number is 85%, then the answer is no. And so to have, having an accurate OEE number is very important when it comes to capacity planning. So when you're a digital organization with a digital strategy and you're making decisions based on digital data, it's very important that the numbers you get are accurate. So what does the boardroom do? They look at the OEE number and they determine where they should invest their dollars, okay? If you have a high OEE number, if you have a very high OEE number, let's say it's 85% or above, so 85% or above, then you're gonna spend your dollars, you're gonna spend your CapEx on building new facilities, okay? But if you have a low OEE number, say less than 85%, okay, Le less than 85%, then you are going to spend your CapEx on efficiency improvements, okay? So let's say it's 50%. As, a, as an executive, what you're gonna do is say, OEE is too low, 50% is too low. We're gonna invest our dollars in improving our efficiency through one of those three pillars. So how do you do that? Well, availability, quality, and performance are for the, uh, for the people who work for the executives. So availability goes to uh, maintenance and reliability. If you have a low, if the reason that your 
um, your OEE number is low is because you have a very low availability number, then you're going to focus on improving reliability of your equipment. And you're going to do that through maintenance and engineering. You're going to invest your capital, your capital dollars into your maintenance department, either doing, you know, you're gonna, maybe you'll invest in a digital CMMS system that's going to reduce mean time to repair and mean time between failure um, on your equipment through your maintenance department to drive up the availability number. Okay, that's where you'll make those capital that capital investment. The boardroom is using these numbers to decide where the capital investment's gonna go. When it comes to quality, you're gonna be focused on tooling, uh, machine builders, and uh, engineering. Okay, if I have a low, by the way, quality is generally the highest number, it's generally 99.5% anyway. Rarely are you investing your money and improving the quality of your finished goods. Generally, even if you have a, you're not calculating OEE at all, you're, and you're running everything on paper, generally your quality number is already high because that's the easy one to track. You know what your waste is, okay? Well, you know how much physical waste you're generating. You don't know how much you're wasting. So, but let's say for the sake of argument, quality is low. Well, then you're gonna invest in higher quality tooling, better um, process engineers, um, you're gonna hire different machine builders, and then performance is you're going to focus on operations. So your capital expenditure is going to be into production planning. You're going to invest in digital SCADA systems so that you can monitor the, the state of your operations digitally. You're going to invest in your operators. You're going to invest in training. Okay. So availability, quality, and performance is used to decide where it is, is it we're going to invest our capital dollars in improving our overall efficiency. But I want to talk about one of the ways, a fundamental difference between the way an industry 3.0 company uses OEE and the way an industry 4.0 company uses OEE, a digitally mature organization. Okay. The, the customer that I, the, 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 the organization that is calculating OEE because they have to check off a box and that's the vast majority of organizations that start calculating it. They're generally calculating one OEE. Okay. The digitally mature organization is actually calculating it three times. Okay, so the first time, the first organization just needs to get the number. Okay, um, and they're going to use what's known as schedule rate to calculate the optimal OEE calculation. That if you use scheduled rate, it's going to give the the person who supervises the calculation of OEE the ability to manipulate the performance number. The, like give you a higher performance number by lowering the, lowering the scheduled rate. Wherever you see an organization that has a, a performance number, that is they're producing more parts than their rate says they should, they are almost always using a scheduled rate on that production line. The rate is too low, okay? That is oftentimes using a scheduled rate is giving the person who oversees the calculation of the OE number the ability to manipulate the performance number higher than, um, than it actually is. But you should be calculating actually three OEE numbers, okay? So number one, you should be calculating theoretical OEE, okay? And this goes to the rates. So you should be op calculating OEE based on the theoretical throughput, the maximum theoretical throughput of your machine. Okay, so that is when the machine builder built the machine, they say that in theory, the fastest this machine can run is one cycle every eight seconds. And if I'm producing one part per cycle, then the most number of parts I can produce in eight seconds is one. That's the theoretical rate. Okay, so you should be calculating OEE based on the theoretical rate, number one. That's the very first one. Okay, you should be also be calculating... OEE based on a standard rate. Now, standard rate is and it is generally it is generally is always going to be the same or lower than theoretical. So that is, if our theoretical rate is we can produce one part every eight seconds, but because of a function, a series of variables related to a specific product that we're going to produce on the production line, maybe it's the tooling. Maybe it's the raw material. It could be maybe if we run it eight second cycle times, we're generating some type of um, uh, we're generating heat that negatively impacts the the output of the production line. So therefore, we're going to set a standard rate for this product code at 
one part every nine seconds. Okay, so standard rate is generally tied to the product code or the combination of the product I'm running and the machine I'm running it on. Okay, so you should be calculating at a minimum theoretical or OEE based on the theoretical production rate of that machine. The fastest that machine is supposed to theoretically be able to produce. You should also be calculating OEE based on the standard rate, which really generally comes from your process engineers. Um, and it's the, it's the people who have signed off on the, um, the production rules for a specific product code and a specific process. And then the last calculation is scheduled rate. This is the one that most organizations who are calculating OEE and they're doing it primarily because it's a requirement from one of their customers, they're using scheduled rate. Scheduled rate comes from your supervisors or your managers, okay? So let's say theoretical rate is uh, one part every eight seconds, standard rate is one part every nine seconds, but we're not able to achieve either of those rates for whatever reason. But what we want to do is we want to be able to use um, OEE to motivate operators. Scheduled rate is the rate that the operator uses or the supervisor uses to motivate their operators. And let's say, and, and this is the one that is variable based on perform. This is the ability of the supervisor to gradually and incrementally raise the bar for their operators. The scheduled rate is the one that the supervisor or operations generally has control over. You know an organization is digitally mature when they are calculating OEE based on all three of those rates and TEEP, which is in theory, what should we, what, how efficient are we running, uh, producing relative to how, if, uh, how much we could produce if we were operating 24 seven minus our minimum um, downtime. Okay, it is very, very important for organizations to understand the role of OEE in a digitally mature organization. One of the biggest challenges you face when you are helping organizations digitally transform and they're already calculating OEE, this is the unique one. How do you, how do you tell an organization that they're calculating OEE wrong or they're pencil whipping it, for example, right? The customer requires it, they're calculating it, and they see their role as hitting that target, but not necessarily hitting that target by producing more parts at higher quality with higher machine availability, but by adjusting the inputs, the variables by which they are being judged so that they can hit that, that arbitrary number. How do you do that? Well, the answer is you don't tell them they're calculating it wrong. What you do is you say, you know, that's generally, that's how you calculate it when it, the, only re, the only way you use OEE is to meet some requirement for your customer. But a digitally mature organization calculates OEE to understand how to improve the uh, efficiency of their operations and where to invest their capital expenditures, okay? All right, that's my story, I'm sticking to it. I hope uh, like, subscribe, comment on the video down below, and I'll see you in the next one.